You ever wonder why there's so many different kinds of radio connectors out there when it comes to your antenna system? Just to name a few off the top of my head, maybe there's BNC, SMA, MCX, F connectors. Why are there so many connectors out there? Well, we're gonna go through different kinds of connectors, explain why there are so many, and where things might be going in the future. Coming up right now on Scanner School. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and this is Scanner School. We teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. Now, this is session number 36. So if you want to know anything about what we're talking about, go to our website. You can go to scannerschool.com slash session 36. And before we start going into what we're going to talk about today, which is connectors, I want to remind you that today's podcast is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. East Coast Pagers is one of my online business websites. And eastcoastpagers.com is a unication Apollo and Swiss phone pager dealer serving the North American market. So from those old one-way alphanumeric numeric pagers that were popularized by doctors and certain individuals out there, uh, to the voice pagers that are very popular with fire departments and whatnot, we have you and your department covered. So because when I say we have you and your department covered, I really mean that we do individual and department sales. So we can generate a, a custom quote or a custom estimate just tailored to you. So check out East Coast pagers.com and be sure to hit that contact button for your custom quote now again every g1 pager that we sell comes with a spare bell clip and a spare set of batteries every g5 pager and g4 pager now comes from unication with phase two included it's no longer a paid upgrade so right now is a great time to jump into your g4 or g5 pager now until the end of september 65 dollars back if you trade in a working pager on a swiss phone S quad voice or an S quad 360 and $75 back if you trade in a minute or five or six or a G1 on a new Unication G1. So right now is a great time to either pick up a Swiss phone, S quad voice or S quad 360 or a Unication G1. Again, eastcoastpagers.com. Click that contact form for your custom quote. And I got one more thing before we get started, and this is this is a big one. This is something new that I'm setting up here. I get a lot of questions that come in via email, uh, and, and it's very embarrassing because I cannot answer them as quickly as I like to. I don't want to make anybody think I'm ignoring them because I'm really not. I, I do read the emails. I just They come in so fast and furious that sometimes it's a little difficult for me to respond to them um, timely. Now, again, I don't want to say, you know, please don't email me. Please don't ask me your questions because a lot of these questions that I get in, um, I write them down and I use them as material for future podcast sessions. So it's great to get feedback from all of you and and know it's on your mind. But again, I feel bad because I can't really answer uh, questions timely. So what I have set up is a way for you to ask me a question that will allow me to answer things a whole lot quicker. It's at scannerschool.com slash ask. Scannerschool.com slash ask. That's the word ask. Alpha Sierra Kilo. In there, there's a great way for you to either, um, I have a phone number in there that you can call up and leave me a voice message. If you don't want to do that because you're outside the United States or you just don't want to pay for long distance, and I don't think anybody pays for long distance anymore, but maybe you do. I don't know. Um, I have a way that you can use your smartphone, your tablet, or the microphone on your computer to leave me a voice message. There's a button on the web page, and you can leave me a voice message. Now, don't worry. You can listen to that voice message before you hit submit. You can re-record it if you're not happy with it. And what I will do is I'll play that voice message that you leave me on a future podcast, and I'll leave an answer. Sometimes... I might just take your question and make a whole podcast episode out of it. So if you have anything that I haven't yet talked about or something that maybe I did talk about that you need a little bit more explanation for, let me know. Scannerschool.com slash ask. Leave me your questions. I'll play them back on the air, and I'll also answer them. Scannerschool.com slash ask. All right, let's talk about the different kinds of connectors out there. Oh. RF connectors. And you may have noticed, like, when you look at a couple of radios, 
it's not standardized and it gets worse than that. So we're going to go through just a couple of connectors, the really common ones that are out there. We're not going to go through like DIN connectors, which are found on like inch and five eighths, inch and a quarter, or, or maybe in seven eighths inch coax line that's used for commercial. We're going to stick it just to what you're going to put in your residential uh, scanner or two-way radio setup. We're not going to commercial. We're going to keep it hobby for now. So we're not talking anything fancy or expensive like DIN or 716 DIN connectors here. Okay, we're going to keep it a lot smaller than that. But let's go way back, way, way back to one of the more common types out there. One that I dread seeing when it comes to a scanner radio setup, and that's the F connector. Now, the F connector is used for TV, over-the-air antenna connections, satellite TV hookups, cable TV, cable modem here in the United States. It fits on RG6 and RG59 coax, and it is rated for 75 ohms because that's what your commercial TV system needs, 75 ohms. That connector is usually a dead giveaway that you have a 75 ohm coax connector set up on your receive. Now, remember, we talked about coax on a previous version of Scanner School. And if you go back to scannerschool.com slash session 30, I go through the different kinds of coax cable out there, both RG6, 58, uh, I believe one through 59, LMR 400. And I explain why you want a 50 ohm coax line and why we prefer LMR 400. If you want to go back through there, go to scannerschool.com slash session 30. And there's also a extra download that you can get uh, on that page that has a nice little chart as to, again, the loss on those types of cables and the effectiveness of each kind of coax. So again, the F connector. The F connector is invented in the early 1950s by Eric E. Winston while he was working at Gerald Electronics. Now, again, I remember here growing up, uh, Gerald Electronics was big in the cable TV industry where you had all the set-top boxes and whatnot. But, again, it goes back to, you know, it's used in 75-ohm connectors. It has a frequency range from 0 DC or 0 hertz all up to several gigahertz, which is why it is still used in the satellite industry because satellite TV is in the gigahertz ranges. So this trick, though, with an F connector is that it uses the center conductor of the coax as the center pin. And then you peel back the braid and that slides over, the connector slides over it, and it crimps down over the shield. The center pin of the coax is the center pin of the conductor. So or the connector, so it needs to be a solid coax, not a braided variety of coax in order to properly use an F connector. Now, outside the United States, and I believe over in uh, Europe and Australia, you guys use the Belling Lee connector. Now, again, that's a push-on type of connector, and it's invented around 1922 by Belling and Lee Limited in the UK, around the same time that the BCC, uh, BBC was starting to do their first broadcast. Wow, I almost said BCC, which is an email term, not the BBC. So, again, you could tell um, I'm not from the UK, if you couldn't tell by the accent. But the Bellingly connector really only works well up to 500 megahertz. So, it's limited to um, all frequencies below 500. But, again, you normally don't see that typically on a uh, antenna system here for the scanner market. Uh, mostly, you'll see, and I cringe, an F connector if somebody's going to go and go that route of using off-the-shelf RG6, something they can get at their weekend warrior store, kind of like Home Depot or Lowe's or just any other type of establishment like that. So another kind of connector. Now, again, if you haven't really noticed, we're starting small here. I guess you probably wouldn't have noticed yet because you're not looking at my notes. But we're starting with the small diameter coax. And we're going to the, 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 the more... Uh, the thicker kind as we go through the list here. So another kind of coax connector that's very popular that's really made for really, really thin coax is the MCX connector. It's Michael Charlie X-Ray. Now this was designed in the 1980s and it's really a small version of the SMB connector. Uh, stands for Sub Miniature Version B or Bravo. Commonly used on GPS receivers and I bring this one to the table here because you can find this connector used a lot on those USB TV dongles. 
that are popular for SDR receivers. So if you had a um, one of those those cheapo USB connectors, I mean, I have a drawer full of them over here. And if you ever wonder what type of connector that is that just kind of pushes it and locks because there's no threads on it whatsoever, that's an MCX connector. Um, if you don't have one of those cheap USB dongles, they're also pretty popular on Apple's Airport Extreme base station. Now, again, it's a push-on type of connector, so you don't screw in. And depending on the connector, it's either good for 50 ohms or 75 ohms. And they have a band pass or a bandwidth really from DC or 0 hertz all the way up to 6 gigahertz, which is why you see them on GPS receivers and also on some Wi-Fi devices. Now, again, I'm bringing that up because you're not really going to see it on the antenna system on something you're going to use on a handheld or a, or a base station. But it is something that you're going to see on those USB dongle devices. Now, again, it's a small connector for a small form device. That's why a lot of these small connectors are in use here, like the SMA connector. So the SMA, or Sierra Mic Alpha, is subminiature version A. It was developed in the 1960s, and it is a screw-on connector. It's 50 ohms, and it has a good bandwidth from 0 to 18 gigahertz. Now, the SMA connector is very popular on today's scanner models by Uniden, uh, also two-way radios by like Yesu, and uh, I believe ICOM is using them as well. And again, it's a small footprint, small footprint type of antenna connection that's really used on very small diameter coax lines as well. If you're going to use it on coax, uh, you wouldn't put an SMA connector on LMR400. So here's the deal, though, when it comes to SMA connectors, there's no standard as to which side of the device gets the male or the female side. So like when it came to the F connector, right, the TV always had the female, the coax always had the male, the MCX, the device has the female, the coax has the male. With SMA, there's no standard here. So your antenna could have the male side or it could have the female side, whereas the radio could have the male or the female side. So that kind of kind of ruins your toolkit a little bit too because if you look at some devices like um, you take your Uniden scanner and you look at the, the antenna, the antenna on that would be a male antenna. But if you wanted to use that on a Baofeng radio or your Unication G4, G5, well, no, that side of the connector is actually on the device and you need a female SMA antenna on those types of devices. So let me explain what the male side looks like on a standard SMA connector. The male on a standard SMA connector has a center pin surrounded by the barrel with the threads. The female has a center sleeve and the barrel has the threads on the outside of it. Okay, so the male screws into or onto the female side. And I bring this up because there's also a RP SMA or reverse polarity SMA where the male side has a center sleeve surrounded by the barrel with the threads on the inside and the female has the center pin surrounded with the barrel with the outside threads. So again, it's the threading is the same, but the pin is backwards. These are common kind of on some Wi-Fi routers as well. Hopefully I got that explanation correct because now I'm thinking about it in my head. Maybe I screwed that one up. But yeah, it's a little bit confusing. You have an SMA, which is really the standard. Um, I, I'm not too really familiar of any any type of two-way radio out here having an RP SMA, but they are out there. And it's something to be aware of that if you get an SMA connector and it doesn't fit right, you might need the RP or the reverse polarity version of that. Okay, now we're getting a little bit larger here. The BNC connector. The BNC is a very popular connector. You can easily find those on uh, a lot of scanner radios, especially the mobile or the base version of a scanner radio. That's that's pretty much the antenna connectors in the back. It's really, it's a bayonet. Uh, it's really called a bayonet Nell or Neil Coleman connector. It's a quick, di quick disconnect type of connector. And it's really cool because the female end basically has two lugs or a bayonet uh, on the outside of it. And the male connector with the center pin, basically it goes on top of the female and you give it a quarter of a turn, and that locks the connector on top of the bayonet. So you're not constantly screwing something in. It's really just a push and a twist, and the connector goes on. 
So this was patented in 1951 and can be used on either 50 ohm or 70 ohm impedance networks. And again, it's kind of difficult to tell the difference between a 50 and a 75 ohm BNC connector. So if you have them laying in a junk drawer, hopefully all of them are the same. Uh, if not, you'll be able, pretty much be able to tell based on what type of coax is connected to. Now the BNC connector has a band pass from four or DC, I'm sorry, it goes from DC to four gigahertz and is really popular like an RF, again, our, our scanner radios, video, and even early computer networks, the 10 base two computer networks. It's also very common in test equipment and avionics, but the, the trick here and, the, and, and really the problem with the BNC connector is the dielectric material on the inside kind of starts to insert some loss when you get to two gigahertz. And the physical design of the BNC connector causes signal to radiate from it due to the bayonet style connector and the slots in the shield um, at signals above four gigahertz. So again, that's why you have other connectors out there that are, are taking over for the BNC connectors, uh, plus a little bit larger. So that's why on, on some of the scanners, you don't see BNC, you see the SMA because they have a smaller footprint. And when things get smaller, you know, things need to adapt. Finally, I want to talk about one more. We're going to go a little bit out of order here because I want to stay within the small coax diameter type of connector. We're going to talk about the mini UHF, and then we'll go into UHF. But the mini UHF connector is, uh, again, it's a miniature version. Obviously, as, as the label on the tin says, it's a miniature version of the UHF connector. They are very, 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 very common, very common on Motorola two-way radios on, on mobile stations. Uh, they were introduced in the 1970s, and they have a band pass from 0 to 2.5 gigahertz. So if you're ever scratching your head trying to figure out what type of connector that is on the back of your Motorola two-way device, it's a mini UHF. Don't call it a Motorola connector. I'm going to get to that in a second, but it's a mini UHF device. Okay, let's take a break here and just recap what we have here on small diameter coax lines. We have... Our, our our stressful F connector and the Belling Lee connector. Please don't use those on your on your scanner radio setup. Uh, you have the MCX connector, which is pretty much used on Wi-Fi and GPS. You have your SMA connector, which is common on uh, the new Unidin scanners and also um, on some amateur radio two-way radios. They're popular, again, because as things shrink and you need to have a smaller footprint on the body of the unit you're using, people, uh, manufacturers are starting to use SMA connectors. Again, you can swap that out with a RP SMA if things are just looking a little uh, non-gender specific, I guess you can say. And then uh, this to wrap that up, we have the BNC connector. All right. So we just talked about the mini UHF, which is common on, the, on, on Motorola gear, but there's also a UHF connector. And the UHF connector, there's two halves to it, the male and the female. Now, the male side is called a PL259, and the female side is called the SO259. They were designed in the 1930s when, at that time, pretty much everything above 30 megahertz was considered UHF. 30 megahertz was VHF. Now we consider it like VHF low, almost, and VHF at you know 144 megahertz. But this is before that time. Everything above 30 megahertz at the time that this connector was invented was um, was called UHF. Now, this connector really is useful uh, from about 0 megahertz or DC uh, to 100 megahertz. And you'll see this connector a lot in CB, amateur radio, uh, and also marine radios. And this was replaced by the N connector. Now, again, PL259... SO259, UHF, there really wasn't a standard set when it came to diameter and sizes, but really the PL259, SO259 is the naming convention used for that size of connector. So that's kind of why a mini UHF connector looks a lot like your UHF connector. Okay, now the big one. The one that we're finding all over antennas um, that goes really great on LMR400 why? It's an N connector. Now, again, this was created by Paul Neal in the 1940s, the same individual that helped create the BNC connector. It's threaded 
and they call it waterproof, but again, I would still tape the living tar out of it. And I say living tar because tarring up a connector is a great way to waterproof it. The band pass or the pass band on the end connector is basically from DC or zero hertz all the way up to 11 gigahertz with some newer versions and some enhancements on the designs taking it up to 18 gigahertz. It does come in 50 ohm and 75 ohm versions. And again, like the BNC, it can be difficult to tell them apart. So here's the cool thing about the N connector. The male has the center pin in the middle, and then there's kind of a, a, an air gap. And surrounding the, uh, at a little bit of a distance, surrounding the center pin, there's a ring, and then there's another air gap, and then you have the... Um, uh, the screw on shield. So you got to think of it kind of like as a bullseye, right? This, the center of the bullseye would be uh, would, would be the center pin. Then you'd have an air gap. Then you would have a ring. Then you'd have an air gap. Then you would have the threads. Now the the threads, obviously the threads and the uh, the the ring are the ground, and the center pin is 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 your center pin. Now the female side of the end connector will have a a sleeve in the center, and then it's solid after the air gap because the the uh, uh, the the ring in the male fits on the inside of the uh, the threading of the female and the threads on the males go over the thread so it makes a really nice solid connection in there now again there's an air gap inside the connector to separate the the center pin from the shield very popular in LMR 400 really popular on antennas these days uh, can be found on Amateur radio equipment, again, found on, uh, not really on scanners themselves at this time, but a lot of the equipment that we interface with, like I said, the, the coax and the antennas have the end connectors on it. So one really cool thing about an end connector is if you're kind of in a pinch or a bind, is you can slip an end connector over a BNC connector. Now, they're not going to tighten down and, and, and lock into place, but one will slide over the other. So the N male will slide over the female BNC and allow you in a small pinch to use the uh, use that without having any type of adapter in play. So again, here's the trick. There's adapters out there. You can screw on a N connector to a BNC connector. You can screw on a uh, UHF. To BNC, you can screw on a N to SMA. You can do BNC to SMA. There's adapters out there, so don't say, "Well, I have an SMA connector on the back of my scanner or, or on top of my scanner, so I need to have L, uh, you know LMR 400 with SMA." You're never going to find that because the SMA connector is too small. It won't go on LMR 400. But again, what you can do, and and, and here's my setup here just to go through it. So my coax terminates to an N connector. I use an N to BNC adapter so that I can plug that coax run into my multi-coupler because my multi-coupler has BNC connectors on it. My multi-coupler then has BNC to BNC jumpers going to my base station scanners, but I also have connectors that have BNC to SMA on it so I can plug it into a handheld scanner if I wanted to as well. Uh, one of the things I never bought that I should have bought was SMA or BNC to MCX so I can use my dongles on my external antenna. Right now, they're working well off the antennas that came with it. So you can see that you're not limited to what's on the coax or what's on the radio when it comes to your connector type. There are ways you can get pigtails. You can get just barrels and jumpers to, to go through. Now, again, you don't want to go like put an end connector to a PL259, then a PL259 to an SMA, because every time you make a connection on it, you can insert some loss. So try and get the exact match that you can uh, out of the parts bin. Now, again, I'll have links to all the stuff, links to images, and everything else on the website at scannerschool.com slash session 36. So before we go, I got two more connectors I want to bring up here. We talked about Motorola earlier in the podcast. There is a Motorola connector, and it's found in your vehicle, believe it or not. The typical antenna connection from your AM-FM radio to your vehicle's AM-FM antenna 
is a Motorola style connector. It's basically kind of like a really thin cigarette lighter adapter or cigarette lighter. And um, so that that's what interfaces the AM FM radio with your vehicle's antenna system. Now, there are some adapters out there that allow you to plug your scanner into your vehicle's antenna system. And uh, again, you would need an interface out there that would tee into a Motorola-style solution. There's also a NMO for a new Motorola, or November Michael Oscar. Now, the NMO mount is very popular for vehicle mounting of antennas. A lot of the, or most of, I would say pretty much all of the through the vehicle type of flush mount antenna mounts are NMOs. Now, NMOs really are a center pin with a dielectric and then a threaded um, threaded side that the antenna screws onto. Now, the antenna really just has a spring-mounted uh, piece of metal that makes up the center coax. So as you're screwing down an antenna, it's basically just compressing that spring in there or that folded over metal that's acting as a spring and the uh, physical screwing down of the antenna onto the NMO mount that's your shield. So again, that's what's pretty much popular when you do through the body type of antenna connections. They also have mag mounts with NMO or uh, trunk lid mounts with NMO if you really want to play around the antennas before you invest in drilling through the body of your vehicle. So these are, um, you know, pretty popular. Again, uh, if you look at, you know, fire apparatus or police cars or any type of thing like that, that has through the body type of connectors on there. Now, there's no, it's not limited to just Motorola. You can pretty much, it's a standard size these days. So you can buy, uh, you know, a Larson uh, Diamond uh, Laird, I believe is the way you pronounce it. Uh, all these other types of antennas out there. When they say NMO, they'll, they'll fit on top of the standard new Motorola or NMO type of connector. So one final bonus connector that I'm going to throw in here is called the FME connector or Foxtrot Michael Echo. The FME connector is basically if you're going to run like an antenna connection that's pre pre manufactured for your vehicle, it's got really thin coax on it. And um, you're going to snake this coax through and, and, and you're going to be in a really tight area you don't want to snake a coax in that's got a really fat connector on it right you don't want to be pulling a bnc connector or an sma you want something that's got a really small footprint on it and the fme connector does just that so typically what happen is you may have you know an antenna mount with an nmo on one end and you'll have um x number of feet of coax line with an fme on the other side and what you'll basically have is an adapter that will take the fme female end and that will convert you to your final RF connection point, whether it be N, PL259, or SMA. So the typical, here's the trick though, the typical FME connector basically has a passband of 0 to 200 megahertz. Uh, but if you use the Amphenel 81-169 connector, you can get up to 2.4 gigahertz on an FME. So again, it's a very, very small diameter connector that is usually put on the end of coax and be routing through your vehicle so that you can tightly uh, go through really tight spaces and and not to make really big holes if you're if you're drilling through something other than your body um, to, to run the coax. All right, guys, that's a quick uh, audible tutorial on the different kinds of connectors that are out there. We'll have pictures of all these types of connectors at scannerschool.com slash session 36. If you need them, there'll be a link to the different kinds of RF adapters out there. So you can go from one type of, 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 of type of connector to another if you need some. Uh, I know I have a drawer full of different kinds here. And when it comes time to pick the one I need, I can never find it. So I'm always buying more. Um, but again, I'll eventually turn this into a YouTube, uh, a YouTube video because I believe this is one of those topics that's better as a visual than an audible, but I still want to deliver that to you as well as an audible because we are talking about, you know, improving and upgrading and, 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 and working our way down the coax. And we're kind of at the end of the coax here. So it's so kind of almost wrapping up this topic with the antenna connector or connectors themselves. So if you want to know when this YouTube video is going to be published now, again, I don't have an ETA for it. It might already be up there. If you listen to this far in the future, I really hope it's up there. If you listen to this in the future, 
Um, but go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This way you're aware of when this accompanying uh, video will be published. Go to scannerschool.com slash YouTube. Very easy. Scannerschool.com slash YouTube and click the subscribe button. And when I publish the video that goes along with this podcast, you will be notified. And before we go, I also want to thank our Patreon supporters, Mark Beebe, MT Bono, and Kenneth Fowler. If you want to help support Scanner School in any way, we have several ways that you can you can help keep us going. Go to scannerschool.com slash support. All right, guys. That's it for this podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining. If you haven't yet subscribed yet, please do so. Scannerschool.com slash subscribe. You can subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Music, I guess is what it's called these days, and now even iHeartRadio and Spotify. So if you are connected with your Alexa device, and I don't want to say too loud because it, you know, it might trigger somebody's uh, somebody's Amazon device or, or your, um, your OK uh, Google device, you could just say, you know, play the Scanner School podcast using iHeartRadio or play the Scanner School podcast using Spotify. And your at-home device will then, if the skill's enabled, will play the latest podcast through that speaker system. If you would rather or if you still listen to my podcast using the website, just subscribe to our email list, scannerschool.com. There's an email form on the front, and we'll let you know every week when the new podcast comes out so you do not miss it. All right, folks, we'll catch you all next Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. This is Scanner School. We teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. 73 going. Thanks for listening to the Scanner School podcast. Be sure to visit www.scannerschool.com to access the show notes and bonus content.